What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So for the week that we have our 2022 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X, we've decided to make a practicality test against my Toyota Tacoma. Both are mid-sized trucks, they have a lot to offer, and in today's video we really want to show the storage space and the practicality of each of these trucks. So the first test that we're going to do is loading up dirt bikes in the bed of these trucks. Now if you don't have a dirt bike, this will just show you the amount of space that you have and bulky items that you can fit in the bed of your trucks. So we have both of the short beds for these trucks, so the five foot beds. And uh, I know that's going to be a hot topic between the short bed versus the long bed. Personally, I like the short bed. You can fit a lot of items back here. The only difference though that we have between both of these is that the front here is a little bit shy of five feet. So it's gonna be interesting to see if we can fit both of these bikes in the back. If I can get my bike <laughs> into neutral here. And so we're gonna start off with the Tacoma because we've done this before. We can easily fit both of these bikes in here. So let's go ahead and load them up. So as you guys can see here, we have both of the bikes in the back of the Tacoma and basically we've put them to the farthest sides. So that way you can see we don't have much space on the far ends here. You can see all the space that's in between the bikes. We normally put the ramp right in the middle along with chairs and other items like that. So this gives you a good, a good reference for the amount of space that we have for the five foot bed. The tires are just sticking out on the back side too. So you can even put some items right in the middle if you want to. And it's really doable. We've even put two street bikes in the back here too. So the five foot bed is definitely usable. It's going to be interesting though to see with the shorter bed here. We do have the bed step though, which is very convenient. Makes it very easy. Let's go ahead and transfer these over to this and uh, see if they fit. so now with the bikes loaded up in the front here when the beds are empty it looks like this is a lot smaller but now that we have the bikes in here it really doesn't look all that different for being a little bit shorter you can see with the ramp right in the middle we still have a lot of space it actually it might be a little bit closer with the foot pegs here uh, but we still have some room on the tailgate itself and one thing you'll notice too i think this bed is designed for bikes to be in the back you can see these channels on both sides. There's none in the middle, so you can roll a bike right in here and have a nice area for that wheel to be locked. So it's not going to twist left or right, which is really nice to see. And we also have the tie down channels in all three corners, along with the aluminum tie downs. Very heavy duty. That is a plus for this truck. On my Tacoma, I had to go out and buy this channel for the front. I also had to spend about a hundred bucks for these uh, tie downs because they come with the cheap plastic ones that you can see here. So it's definitely beneficial for that. Also, the Tacoma doesn't come with the spray and bed liner, and we do have a little bit different of a fender arch in both trucks here. Now that's not really going to pertain to the motorcycles here, but if you're putting in a fridge or some kind of larger item, it might be a little bit tighter, I think. Which one do you think will be <laughs> tighter in? This one's a little tighter. A little bit on the front here. I think we have a little bit more of an open space back here, even though the fender arches are a little bit wider. You can see they're pretty flush in the front here. So overall, they're basically pretty the same or pretty similar for this. However, on the Frontier, we do have these steps. So it just makes it a little bit easier to get in and out, of course. My truck is lifted, so that's a whole different topic. Um, I don't have a step, so you kind of just have to jump into the back. But let's go ahead and move on to round number two. And for this test, we will be doing a three-point turn in our driveway here. So we have the rock wall on one side and a garage door on the other. We're going to test how well they can turn around, how tight the steering is. So Brian's gonna start in the Tacoma. I'm also going to time this as well. I'm just using the timer on the actual camera. You ready, Bri? And three, two, one, go. And so now on my Tacoma, all I have is the backup camera. I have no parking sensors or anything. So he just has to rely on the guidelines. He can go a little bit farther, a little bit more, stop. And he might be able to make this. Yep, you're good, keep going, keep going. We're gonna go all the way to this line here. So the time to beat is just over 20 seconds. And three, two, one, go. Now the Frontier has the 360 camera system. It has backup sensors as well. So Brian can even see using the side mirrors what's behind him or of course what's on the side of him. And he can get much closer to the wall there.
and across the line. So the Frontier came in right around 25 seconds. It was closer to 20 seconds for my Tacoma. Brian, what do you think? You were driving them both. So I like the camera system in this. It's awesome having a front view and top down view. There's a front view? Yeah. Oh, I didn't mention that. The steering is very heavy in this truck, which I like on the highway, but slow speed, it's actually a little cumbersome to turn it quickly. Yeah. And I don't think the turning hmm. radius is as tight because I made it to the um, house, the Tacoma, yeah. I made it to dad's bumper. I was going to say, I think we did an extra turn, yeah. which is why it was about four or five seconds slower. So you got more technology, but a little bit harder to steer and not as sharp. On to more of the practicality now between both of these mid-sized trucks. And that's how usable the back seat area is for storage. So on the frontier here, you can lift up this latch and you'll see over on this passenger side, we have some storage. You do get some more storage on the driver's side if you don't opt for the Fender Audio. So we have that sub in this one here, or you can have additional storage. So that's an option, which is nice to see. And then behind it, the backrest here, you have a little bit of storage. We have the jack and some tools here. One downside I will say is when you fold these down so you have a flat surface, we just have some cloth here. So you do, or you could puncture this depending on the items that you put back here. So that's just one thing to point out. And then also right in the middle, we have some auxiliaries and a three prong outlet. So you can charge electronics, whatever tools you may have in the back. We don't have that large of a bump either. So you even have more storage space in the footwell. Onto the Tacoma now, we're gonna start in the same order. Now the seats on this actually fold in the opposite direction. And you'll see, I have to open up the storage bin and this goes all the way to the other side. You can opt for an additional audio system, but that sub is back here. So it still retains all of the storage from door to door underneath both seats. And then to fold these seats down, you do have to remove the headrest. Now you do get a location where you can put them if you need to. I've just removed them for now. And you can slide this down and you'll see the positive that we have on the Tacoma is this hard backing. So I've put in a lot of items to slide them across here. You don't have to worry about puncturing the back, which is really beneficial. You can see all of this storage space. We definitely have a lot more in the Tacoma. I have my tow hitch there, a tow hook. You even have more storage over on that passenger side. But then one negative I will point out here is we have no way to charge any electronics in the back seat. And it does seem a little bit more narrow. I've had to move these seats forward a good bit to put in like lunch boxes, any items like that. We have a little bit, a little bit more of a bulge here. So if you want to put any items across, it might just be a little bit more tricky. So for our next test, both of these trucks are meant for off-road. We have the Pro4X and the TRD off-road. We've set up a scenario here. My Tacoma is not actually stuck, but we've hooked it up to the front here. We want to see which one can actually tow them out and then how easy it is to get into four-wheel drive, do the locking rear diffs since both of them have that. So before we get started here, Brian is going to put the truck into four low. So we'll go to neutral, yep. four high, and then push it for four low. It works, four low. We now have my front view cameras on and I can see the front tire. So technology wise, that's obviously a cool thing. And then I have a locking differential button and the diff is we're all locked. Set. So we're in four low locked diff let's tow the Tacoma out all right and so now in the Tacoma all I'm going to do is put this truck into neutral so that way all of the weight is on the front here and I'm in it just in case we have any issues but go ahead Brian oh hold on okay so I'm completely off the brake it's time for you to start towing look at that it is walking this up both trucks weigh around the same wow I am barely touching the gas <laughs> wow so this truck, I believe, can tow like four, 5,000, 6,000 pounds. Top-down view is running too in this uh, slow speed mode. Like a freaking cakewalk. Absolutely nothing. And just like that, we are up this hill. Now, obviously, this is nothing too crazy. Again, just a demonstration. And I think we're good there. <laughs> Very cool. Let me show you guys real quick what that looks like you can see this whole 360 view and everything that is an awesome touch for crawling in the frontier sweet sweet little truck so we're flip-flop now and one thing i wanted to point out too is the pro 4x is on all-terrain tires so they did really well for this scenario the tacoma obviously has some aftermarket tires with a little bit more grip but we're going to go and start the same process here we have a turn knob just like on the nissan for low and uh, lock and diff. Just the exact same, super simple. Yeah. All right. And so now it is time for Brian to start moving. I got the front here in neutral. 
And just like that, we're getting this frontier out of the mud. Just kidding, it's some dirt. So with this one, I did have to give it just a hair amount of gas to start pulling. Uh, but just like the Nissan, I mean, obviously you can tow this. So both tugs can easily tow themselves out of a ditch. On camera, it's not gonna come off that steep, but it's a pretty good incline and we're on leaves in the grass. It's a little damp out here. So yeah, Tacoma, not even sweating that at all. It takes a little bit more, I'd say, to get this into four low. Sometimes the Toyota systems are a little finicky. The Nissan was a little bit quicker. So I'd say 51 to 49. That'd be my score ratio between the two. So there's our practicality test, putting the Nissan Frontier Pro 4X up against my Toyota Tacoma. Now the advantages and disadvantages between both of these trucks is very minimal, but they're both very competitive and practical midsize trucks. Starting off with the bed space, we found that the Tacoma was a little bit more roomy. However, the Frontier comes with the tie-down hooks and the tie-down rails, which is definitely a plus over the Tacoma. Yeah, back the... seat space, Tacoma's definitely much more roomy and practical. However, we do like a smaller bump in the floor of the Nissan. Yeah. And then moving to the off-road stuff, the Nissan is way easier to get into four-wheel drive low. Tacomas have always been a little finicky. I don't know why they're <laughs> like that. Sometimes yeah. it just takes a minute. Uh, they both can tow each other out, so no biggie yeah. there, I think, off-road, which we're going to be doing later. Um, mm -hmm. I think they're both going to do really well there. Yeah. As far as the three-point turn goes around, the Nissan was a little bit heavier. That may be a disadvantage when we take it off-road, really to see how well it, yeah. it can maneuver through the trails. Yeah. The Tacoma is much lighter. I feel like I have a better turning radius when we're through the trails. Yeah, that steering feel, it makes a big difference. Yeah, so we'll see how it's like off-road. That video will be coming soon. But overall, for a winner, it's kind of hard to tell. Like I said, the differences are very minimal. So either one yeah. could be a great option Both to go pretty with. pretty cool trucks. Those are our tests. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button, stay tuned for plenty more content. And we'll see you guys all in the next video.